Hi, hello, hey, and welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am your host, Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by Mr. David Rushed Vibes Rushing. And we are here to rush the vibe with our tribe. Hi, we are yet again. Yet again. Another. So soon. So soon? It feels like we just recorded. Did we? It feels like it. Um, hmm. We recorded. When did we record last? Today's Sunday. When did I go out of town? Um, oh, so we did it Monday. Okay. Okay. So it wasn't so soon. Yeah. It just feels different like week, it. according to you. That's probably going to come through the mic, by the way. You're so popular. Who are you messaging? Uh, Leah. The one and only. The one and only. Actually, Leah. no. I have another Leah in my life, but. Oh, the only the only one and only Leah in our lives. Yes. Yeah. Even though you know the other Leah, you just don't remember her. Then I don't know her. <laughs> I don't She's if been I don't, in your house. If I can't remember, I don't know. That's that's the one with the husband, who I played. <laughs> Both Leahs have husbands. No, but the one that came over, we played two K. Yeah. 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 He um, I don't think he liked me too much, because I kept beating him, and uh, we had Bert at the time, and Bert kept like. You know, it's home home court advantage, right? When you come over here and you play me in 2K. So Bert would like go over and sit on his foot, <laughs> like distract him. So I'd get like cheap points. So, but full disclosure, I could have beaten him with or without the disruptive beagle. Uh, that was Bert. Rest in peace. But yes, I remember vaguely because you cooked that night that I they came over. for everybody who comes over. Most people. Okay. You don't cook for my mom and dad anymore. They don't come over. <laughs> I don't even know, with the exception of dad coming to pick up milk, I think, while we were in Vegas. I don't know the last, last time. Last time they were here. Well, were here. I, I was talking to mom because I dropped our kid off at their house. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I was describing how the, um, the other day when I came in and laid on the floor where I laid. And I realized she had no understanding because she hasn't been here since we rearranged the living room. What did we rearrange? The couches or the couch. We angled it, remember? And it used to be flat. Either used to be at the no, she, at the top of the... I feel like they've been... She said thing. she didn't. She didn't know what I was talking about. Oh, okay. Well, that's on them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's been a while since we've... Uh, since Not really. Seven days. But what are y'all messaging about? Her hair. Uh, what's she doing this time? She got some faux locks that look really good. Oh, she had faux locks during the sum, last yeah, summer, right? But these ones are, they're re- they look really good. Yeah. They they accentuate her really well. Like she had a whole like six piece story and I didn't listen to any of it. I was just admiring her locks. I actually took screenshots so that when I find somebody to do faux locks for me, I can just show them her face. Never known anyone who utilizes the voice memo as well or as yeah. much as Leah. Yeah. You can text her and you will get a voice memo back. And you text her again. And you'll still get a voice memo. Get a voice but memo it's back. not annoying from her. No, and it's also contagious. Because now I send, when I yeah. speak to her, I come proper. Even when I, I message I, her on Instagram, it's usually voice memos. Yeah. So it's 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 a thing. She's an influencer. It's funny. Like, you don't want to. Di- she's disrupted my main form of communication now. She's coached your life. But it's just, it's funny how, you know, we went from cell phones, so you could talk to people and then you started texting. So then you don't want people to call you. And now we voice no. memo, but you can send a voice memo, but don't call me. Well, the cool thing about a voice memo is it's there when you want it, when you, when you're ready to hear it. Right. Unless you have it set to delete. Well, well yeah. But which, which my this, cousin but, makes me do because I guess <clears throat> she's afraid we're going to send something incriminating and it'll come back. So that in itself is self-incriminating. <laughs> I'm just saying. So I had to do, but, I had to change my setting to delete um, mine. Yeah, I mean, but you can snap people now. You can do all these variations the of, means of, of communication. Are, yeah. And I think I might actually start doing that more. I used to during the pandemic. Obviously, we couldn't go see people, so I started to lean into FaceTime a lot more, um, which is still kind of disruptive. And didn't I, re- I say that a couple episodes and, ago, and you were like, "I don't see how." 
Um, or were we talking? And I was like, and they had the audacity to FaceTime me. What was the instance? Something happened. Well, it's the same as I, I said. It's no different than a phone call. No, it's different. I remember it it's was. Not. It was. Um, I won't say who, because then they'll know that I ignored their FaceTime. Oh. Um, <laughs> but it's more intrusive. No, it's not. It is because you don't have to answer it. Well, if I'm in a, if I'm out, and you call me and I pick up. That becomes an intimate conversation here with mm-hmm. FaceTime, unless you already have headphones in. You, Which you do. Your visual, I usually don't. Oh, you, I thought you said unless you have no, headphones. No, it's it's a face. You're it's FaceTime time with the face, so that you don't know. Am I still in bed? Am I? Is my face clean? You don't know my parameters, so I feel like FaceTime is is very intrusive to be. Like, why would I'm your face? Gonna, why would your face not be clean? Maybe I'm still in bed. If they're calling you at two in the afternoon, why would you still be in you bed? You don't know my life. I know your life. And you shouldn't, you actually, no, at you no point, you don't know my life. At no point should you be in bed at 2 p.m. There should, but there Unless you're sick. Inst- there have been instances where at 2 p.m. I'm like, I just need to lay down. So I go lay down in my bed. Regardless, you. it's Snitching. more intrusive to just take the, to have the audacity to just FaceTime someone without clearing it with them first. It's, it's the same to me. I'll answer it or not answer it. So. I mean, I didn't answer, yeah. but I was also upset that you just thought I had the capacity. And it was during the work day. Who was it that FaceTimed you? I'm trying to remember. I, can, I can't give hints without giving it away. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Um, Who was it? Because it was the middle of the work day. And I was like, the fact that you think I'm just chilling, able to answer your FaceTime. I have meetings. <sighs> I have work. Who was it? And I just, I just, oh, I can't, I can't, I feel, I vividly remember this conversation. I yeah, can't remember I was, who it was. I was just very insulted. Not just at the simple fact that it's like, you didn't even clear it with me first. Like you didn't. And later when I found out why they were FaceTiming me, I was like, you could have just texted me. It could have been an email. It could have been, no, it could have just been a text. I'm saying that's, because we equi- figured, that's the equivalent. We, it could have been, it could have been an email. Out via text. So I was like, why didn't you just text me or just be like, do you have a sec to FaceTime? Yeah. But again, it was it didn't warrant a FaceTime, so that's why I was like perturbed. Sure, I guess I'm just I'm more frustrated that I can't remember who it was because I remember us talking about it. But um, yeah, so I was I was trying to say that I think what I'm going to do now is um, to start leaving snaps. Like I don't really know how to use Snapchat that well, but. I know how to leave snaps, like video snaps. So I'm just going to start doing that. I know Snapchat. I and only have Snapchat to watch Samantha's Snapchat stories. And you're, for your kids to post And apparently snaps. Solace went on like a Snapchat spree and David saw it and didn't ask why I posted odd posts. Well, there was a picture of Sovereign and there was a picture of like some shoes or something. Like you were, like, I guess you can have shoe filter or something. Yeah, she put a shoe filter on her feet. I thought you were trying on shoes. And I snapped it? Like, you don't even know me. No, I do know you. Uh -uh. Because if you did, you would have been like, Jess, why did you put this on your Snapchat? So it took until almost 24 hours later for me to see something in my icon and then have to go out of my way to figure out how to view the story. And then I viewed the story and I was like, Solace, why did you post a story, multiple stories on my Snapchat? So that's what you get. That's what you get for letting the kids have access to your phone. People just. I don't think, have that. I don't have that problem. I mean, you're just because you're. Yeah, I don't like random snaps showing up on my profile. You're absolutely right. Um, yeah, and some snaps, and there's some people who I need to snap. So I'm just gonna be like people, like random times of the day. I'm just gonna be like snapping people. And what's cool about it is that they can get back to it when they can get back to me. When they're ready, the snap won't disappear. I mean, that's what a text message can do, too. Well, but I can see you, and you can see me. That's the difference. Send a picture. Or I can send a snap. Okay, whatever. And you can see me. And you can see get tone and emotion. You can see my well-being. Well, that's going to be the next feature that Apple adds. You got voice Probably. memo. They're going to add face memos. Probably. I mean, you can already send. Can I trademark that? Like videos? No. Mm-hmm. Don't don't have <laughs> Apple knocking on our door, suing us, cease and desist. You don't I know what they are. They may already have a trademark. Maybe they, I just want them to cut me a check. I just need some. No, nah, you ain't get no check. Somebody to cut. Apple me a check. didn't become the richest company in the world by cutting checks if they don't have to. So, I'm pretty sure I came up with marking text unread. 
and they still uh, haven't you, dropped it. You yes. asked, you asked for it. He's been, been asking, asking for, for it for for, over for a, a while, now. and it will be a part of iOS 16 that yeah. launches I'm pretty in sure. a couple in a few weeks. I'm pretty sure. I should. Yo, it's almost September. Yeah, in two weeks. Like, it's around the corner. Like, if you look, if you lean and look, you can see it. You, that's not how months work. Like, I can look. I can. This is not. This, you're not on a ship saying land ho. Like, that's <laughs> I, not how like, this works. Like, yo, land ho. It's September is right around the corner. Okay. What does it say? A couple of knots. <laughs> it's like two knots away. It's crazy. That means we're, we would officially be in the last quarter of the year, right? No, O and D is the last quarter of the year. What? Sorry, it's liquor. October, still. October, November, okay. December. Calm down. That's how. That's I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not a liquor. I'm not one of your. That's your why people. I said. That's why I apologize yeah. because I refer. I go by Owen. quarters by the acronym. O and D. I was about to say. Wait a minute. Who's Owen? <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. We're dropping no, random dudes' names in, in my. We'll still be in the third quarter. Okay. Cool. I'm paranoid now that I know. Um, what's her face? Woke up. Uh, mm-hmm. I said I'm paranoid now that I know what's her face woke up every time I what's her face as in your daughter yeah what's her face don't refer to your children as what's her face <laughs> I was trying to figure out who you're talking about what's her face our last born child yeah her what you call me dude Bama like you call me all these names out my outside my actual name and I you don't think you, I can't I didn't make you you don't there's an argument to be made that you did make you did help chisel I, I me did. into I reshaped to how I am yeah, so I still got some more chiseling to do yeah a lot more but <laughs> you know a lot more don't call my kid what's her face I mean she got it she was standing independently for like a good 20 seconds was she yeah I got on I was FaceTime with Loretta so Loretta got to see her but she was just hovering uh I mean she's gonna walk I feel like that's that's next in the progression. No, there's she didn't nothing spend, to feel like it is. I'm she just didn't spend too much. Big, it's a she big didn't deal. spend too much time crawling. It's she, like she crawls now, but only if she's trying to either get up the steps or come get, to the bathroom or get away from somebody. Yeah. And then the audacity of a baby to think like you can, <laughs> like I take I two mean, steps I and mean, cover. She's quick. You, I take two steps and she's, cover way more ground than you, and you think you can quick. crawl. Like she you, thinks she can. Like, you really got the confidence that you can just get away from me by crawling at 0.5 miles per hour? Like, nah, get out of here. Like, I'm I'm offended when she tried to crawl away I from me. I am very proud. Scoop her up with one hand and be like, yo. I'm proud that she she believes in herself. That's self-confidence to a yeah. whole new level. Whatever. Yeah, she's got the little sinister. I'm not doing another podcast about our kids, but. A little sinister giggle with her little four teeth, two up top, mm. two on the bottom. <laughs> terrorist, domestic terrorist. That's all she is. Her and her sisters. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, uh, how, how you been? What's up? How was your trip this week? It was busy. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that I really want to talk about it. Oh really? I mean, it was just a lot. It just made me question a lot of my life decisions. Hanging out with Ian and Cynthia would make me question life as I well. Didn't get to, it wasn't. It was all business. Like there was no. I didn't even have like a moment to hang. Like it was just every Good. free moment went to something else. I was. I haven't been that stressed out in a very long time. Good. I don't need them. I don't need Cynthia trying to pull you into another commitment anyway. Technically, I pulled her into a commitment. No. Well, well, she's being compensated for it. I get compensated for my commitments. Now you get freebies. That's different. No, I. Oh, you get paid. You got money coming in. You gonna let me know? Under the table, huh? That's what we do in twenty twenty two. That's good stuff. Nice to know. Look, set set up my little offshore account of my own. You done? Off the shore of Myrtle Beach. (laughs) (laughs) Some shark gonna take it. Uh, Sharks are wild out there. Yeah, we did. uh, Were we watching TV when? The news earlier this week, we heard somebody got. I feel like just yesterday, two people got attacked. Some people got bit. Beach. And I'm like, why do y'all keep getting in the water? See, no, you know why? I'm not really. I appreciate the beach. I'm not a water guy. Too much stuff just be. Could be plastic, stingray, jellyfish. Like, too much stuff could yeah, be in the water. True. And I, mean, I can't. In the Dominican Republic, when we stepped in, there was a sign for sea urchin. I was like, are you serious? Yeah, and like. 
And this is America, so let's not act like we got clean water. <laughs> like it's it it's, like we got it's clean murky, anything. It's murky. I can't like if it's clear water. Okay, I'll get in it because I can see through it. No, I'm not getting in this dirty water. Would you snorkel? Um, would I snorkel? Maybe. I plan on snorkel. I wouldn't flat out say I, I would never snorkel. Would you scuba dive? These are things where knowing how to swim is a prerequisite. No, actually, so. you don't need to know how to swim to scuba dive because they put flippers on you. Like, just by default, you are able to swim. No, nah, I don't believe that. Okay. <laughs> because I'd be the one. <laughs> I'd be the one guy. I mean, they do a pre-training, but I heard snorkeling and scuba diving. A 34-year-old African-American man you have drowned the, yesterday. Because you have the <laughs> flippers, it defaults you You can swim. Like, I know plenty of people who don't know how to swim but have snorkeled or scuba dove, and they can do that because of the equipment. Yeah. Well, maybe. I mean, I need to learn how to swim anyway. It's, you I'm, I'm I need to learn how to swim above water. Yeah. So you learn to swim. I can swim underwater. <laughs> you didn't see me floating in the pool and going underwater. I'm dead bodies float, Jess. <laughs> like just because you float, don't mean nothing. Don't disrespect. That's me. not. I mean, I that's was not. Floating, and then I was like, you know what? Let me just get my hair wet. And I was like, oh, I can actually swim underwater. Yeah, right. it's the above water. No. I mean, that that would be kind of cool to snorkel. Go find the Titanic. Do you know how deep you got to go to find the Titanic? Mm-hmm. Then they didn't pull it out. No. No, it's still down there? Yes. Oh. That would be kind of cool. You can do that. That's all you. I didn't say we're going to do all that. I just want to <laughs> see a coral reef. For what? To say I did. I want to put on a GoPro and see a coral reef. You can pull up YouTube and see a whole bunch. You can see all the coral reef no, you want. that's somebody else's coral reef. But you see it. <sighs> see, this is why. This is why what? This is why people think black people aren't adventurous. I am. I mean, well, one, we had a... a Black friend that just went to freaking Alaska, right? Yeah. So she's breaking stereotypes. I, I'm, I, I'm, like you look, said, she's not the first black person to go to Alaska. She's not. Absolutely not. But she's doing it. I want to go to Alaska. I want to see the Aurora Borealis. The who, what? Oh, yeah. The who? Hmm? Google it. What is it? The Aurora Borealis. No. Okay. You saying it again? <laughs> Tell me what it is. What is it? You should just know. Well, I don't. It's the Northern Lights. Oh. Okay. You know what the Northern Lights are? Yeah, I know they're green. Right? They're not? What's next to talk no, about? No, wait, wait. No, the Northern Lights aren't green? I mean, I'm sure there's green in them. No, every picture I've seen of them, they're like they're like green it's more than it's lights it's different colors there's sure green, but there's white there's blue well, green pink is and red. Well, green is a dominant very dominant color than that the one that you would expect to see in the sky so that's why it stands out to me okay but the pictures i've seen of it of them plural i would assume they're green okay so i'm not wrong so don't be rolling your but eyes you just like said they're green like you just picked a color nah i mean i was I've seen pictures of them. Okay. It's science. Yeah. And that's a big draw because um, I was thinking of going to um, Iceland. Iceland for one of our trips. And I might still. Um, By yourself? No, for us. Oh, because you said you might. You made it sound very similar. I may still plan for us to go. Oh, okay. Yeah. But the way your energy coming off, like it might be me I mean, and me and what's her face going and the way, the way <laughs> you can stay here. Coming off, you might be here for your birthday trip. So, um, Mosley on down I thought you could only see them from from there, but it no, wasn't I mean, until Iceland I, and Alaska are kind of on the same in the same hemisphere, so they got well, the same. I was gonna, yeah, and I was going to say I wasn't until uh, Missy told me that she was going and said that I think it was a conversation with her where she said she was looking forward to seeing them. And I was like, oh, I thought you were going to oh, see them from this time of year. I don't. It may not have been her. I may have been talking to somebody else about okay. Alaska, which I don't yeah, know who else. I I was I. Th- I think it's during our winter. I think it's oh, later in the year. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know who I would have been speaking to. But somebody told me that you can see them from Alaska as well. Maybe it was I think one of my coworkers one of my um one of my coworkers is going. That might have been it either. I mean that might have been the conversation. But in any event. Um no, I'm very I'm very adventurous. I would uh skydive. You know what's crazy? Is um there was this video that went uh pre viral on Twitter probably about two or three years ago. It might even be older than that. But um 
I don't know what the things are called is where you jump out. Paraglide? But yeah, the paraglide where you kind of like have like the little wings. The suit? Yeah. Um, but it was crazy. <laughs> Somebody had a GoPro on and one of the people who jumped out before him as they kind of got low to the ground, you saw the person and like, <laughs> so it was like, like the person's like likely dead and they just kept, I mean, obviously you can't stop gliding, but I'm surprised that they kept that in the video that they posted. Did so, they do pass out? So the con, no, I think they they hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so the comments were like, so we gonna act like dude in the blue <laughs> just laying in the ground. It is not funny, right? Because like if they did die, that's horrible. But the way like you see the blue, the person in blue jump out before the person who's filming, and then you see the person who's filming like get really low to the ground. And then you realize they pass over the dude in the blue. <laughs> it was like, wait a minute. I thought he's supposed to be in the air. And it's <laughs> it's like a clip from a Kevin Hart movie. Like it's just it's hor- like it's horrible. <coughs> Cause if, if the person's actually dead, like that's tragic. But it's Twitter, because you know, people on Twitter they got no they got no moral compass. And so they were having a field day with it. Um and I didn't notice it at first. People and I saw the comment, they were like, So we're gonna act like like the dude in blue and just I like mean, so laying like, it, laying in the ditch right there. And I was like, what? So I wound it back. I was like, damn, he's really in the ditch. Like, he's just right there. You just pass right over him. But I imagine, I mean, it's one of the risks you take, right? It's just I like mean, flying too close you, to the sun. Like you, just, you glide too close to the ground. You liable to be in the ground. Well, I mean, dude had wax wings when he was flying close to the sun. And I'm just. Wings melt. I'm just saying, you get too close at too high a speed. I feel like you need to check your heart before you jump from a plane. Look, I would do it. You jump from a plane. I think that's where I drop draw the line. I mean, we all got to go sometime, right? So if my if the way so, I if the way I go is descending from however many thousand feet, be it. Floating or I would gliding a, or I just dropping. I couldn't do the wings. I need a parachute. Mm, sometimes those don't. Those don't pull. CB. <laughs> Look, <laughs> if I gotta pull out a pocket knife and rip it out myself, I will. All you gotta do is uh, what Steve Harvey say. Uh, he would have done at the Titanic. Like <laughs> would have opened up a dinner napkin <laughs> with some air get in it. Just pull it, pull something out. Let the air catch it. Anyway. Gotta have gotta have contingencies. Gotta be ready. Anyway, but no, I would, I would, I would, I would do it. Okay. Oh, that'd be cool. Um, the whole vibe tribe heard you. Yeah, I mean, I, I have no no reason to renege. Renege. <clears throat> I think I want to do a. Um, What's the joint where you hang and you... Is it hang glide? Zip line. Zip line. I've done that. It's fun. <clears throat> I'll do that because um, boy Lorenzo, uh, he went to Mexico, I think, for his honeymoon. And I think he he did that. I wouldn't have thought you as a zip liner. It's just cool. Like you... And everybody's... Not only you can you see stuff and see all the peasants below you as you're, <laughs> as you're zip lining. People in line waiting to... <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. waiting for their turn to also be <laughs> to be elite because they're behind you they won't be peasants once they get up on the line but until then yeah they little peasants because they down they down they beneath me figuratively and literally okay. they're beneath me I, I, okay. and uh you know like hey peasant <laughs> the peasants and then five and of course you know karma catch up and you zip right into a tree or something but no that that would be cool um So, we, I asked, this is all, we, we, how do we start this? I asked you how your week was and your trip. How do we get on ziplining? I don't know. Yeah. I, so, don't, I don't know. Cool. Um, this was supposed to be, uh, we were supposed to have a special guest. It's supposed to be a special guest episode, but mm-hmm. our guest keeps ducking us. Our guest is living her best life. Yeah. So And I support it. I don't know at what point that episode, I mean, we'll see them at some point. By law, we have to. <laughs> Is it a law? I mean, I guess not. Maybe not. I think the only law is making sure they're 
taken care of and going to school, getting educated. Yeah. Well, in any event, maybe it'll run next week. I don't know. Um, and the reason why I was like, yo, September is next week because we got a guest that I said we were going to have on August. And so it's going to be September Mm -hmm. because there's just not enough time. You know what I just remembered? I had tickets to the Jalaf festival. That's this Saturday in Durham. This Saturday is in yesterday. No, it's in coming next week. Oh, considering I forgot about the tickets I had to the taco festival. Yeah, so you kind of dropping the ball. I am. Fortunately, I didn't pay for these, so that makes it a little bit better. But I'm just putting that out there. If you it must like, be nice to not have to pay for stuff. If you feel like going to Raleigh for yeah. a, my network, your network is for July. My so. my net worth is based off my wife's network because. All the stuff I be posting on my IG and stuff, not, not a lot of stuff. I don't, I don't be you out like that. You only post cigars on your IG. No, I also post when we go out, don't I? No. I thought I posted when we went to the trap brunch. I think you only post those things on Facebook. Oh, okay. Well, that's because my IG is, is targeted. Uh, whereas Facebook is just not. It's just David. Okay. Cool. <laughs> that's okay, right? Is that, is that a problem? It feels like you're hiding us. Because I I have my IG as a cigar page. Hmm. Triggers memories. But I put I put y'all on Facebook. Okay. I got more f- followers or friends or whatever on Facebook than I do Instagram. Okay. So weird. So weird. Um Wait a minute. No, we're going we're gonna to unpack this. How is this triggering? Because there was a time that you didn't want us to go Facebook official. I didn't want you and I to be Facebook official? No. Why? Because you were hiding us. Us? Yeah. Oh, you and me. I thought you meant like us. Like I said, did I say that while we had kids? Um, you said I was hiding y'all like Drake? Drake and his kid? Yeah. Mm. You're treating us like my bed. I don't know that I remember this this period of time. It's okay, you don't have to remember. I do. Well, I'm sure you concocted quite the memory concocted? that you have. Yeah, I feel like you I just want to unpack you, this on on um the podcast for witnesses. And why stop? I mean, why stop now? You already brought it up. It's ridiculous. Y'all see how I get ambushed? I'm over here trying to have a nice conversation. You're the one who kept digging into it. A nice conversation, and here, so here, in Ghana, there's a there's you a, come. There's a parable. You ain't from Ghana. If you look in the eyes of a corpse, you'll find something. That's how the best English translation I can do. I'm not dead. This, that's not the point. What is the point? The point is, if you if you dig into something deep enough, you'll get something. You'll get an answer. And you chose to dig. You're hiding. I'm hiding. But you're not dead. <sighs> this is what happens when you deal with Americans. Mm. I guess so. Because you too are an Yo, American. Where are we? Where are we going? According to Trump, I'm not. <laughs> okay. According to Trump, I am from an ish hole country. You can say it. Shithole. I don't. I don't cuss. That's circumstantial cussing. Um, I say ass. I say damn. S- speaking of cussing, Jessica, I sent you a video earlier. Oh, you said it yesterday and again today. Did I? Oh, yeah. that probably means I wasn't confident that you would actually watch it because I knew you probably didn't have time yesterday. Oh, uh, so you respect that I don't have time? No, now? I just know what you're going to say. I don't have time because we went through this last episode. I'm cussing at you in my head. <laughs> I was like, I don't have time to watch this I don't. two minute video. It, it was so long. It was two minutes and tw- see, two that's minutes. what I, see. That's what social media and Twitter has done to my attention span. A two minute video, like somebody puts in the group chat or somebody sends me, seems like such an enormous task. Especially if it if I can't immediately discern whether I'm actually going to be interested in it or not. I, so I get it. A two minute video feels like an eternity. However, it's still two minutes. And I mean, for me, it was two minutes of can I get two minutes while these kids are running around to actually hear what this person's saying, which I didn't yesterday. I got through like 42 seconds and then yeah. Savi was like, hey, mommy, hey, mommy. That's pretty good. That's more than I thought you would have gotten through. Uh, I thought what I thought was that you would watch it when you went to bed um, or before you went, fell asleep. That's what I thought. 
I was awake long enough to know whether you did or didn't because I was out. Mm-hmm. Like I fell asleep put on top of your bed again. Um, but anyways, <clears throat> the video of a, uh, there's a lot going on this week. A lot happened. A lot happened last week. I've been uh, in my own little bubble. Me so. too. And it wasn't until I got on Twitter and thank God for Alan because he puts a lot of it on my radar, like on Twitter because he, he'll like and retweet stuff and he'll pop up on my timeline and I'll just dig through corpses on Twitter and find stories and stuff. So um, there was a, there's a, a, a black female therapist on TikTok. 140 some odd thousand followers. I believe on TikTok. Okay, because her Twitter only had thirty five hundred. Yeah. Oh, sorry, my mic. <clears throat> um, on Twitter, on TikTok, because the video was actually posted on Twitter from TikTok. I don't think she posted it herself. Oh, okay. Um, and in this video, she was uh, specifically speaking to black men, um, saying that they need to go to therapy because they lack the emotional was it intelligence. Mm-hmm. Um, and they don't know how to speak and, uh, amid a lot of, um, uh, vulgar language, vulgar. she was cussing vulgar. quite vulgar. a lot. Delivery was very strong. Vulgar and brawless. I, I'm, I'm contemplating on playing, I'm actually inserting the clip because, um, it's really, it's pretty, it's pretty vulgar. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, I don't know if I want to have to like censor everything. Like the beep, oh, you know beep, how to do that? The beep, the beep, huh? You know how to do that? Yeah. Just download a beep <laughs> and then you play it whenever the that's basically I it. That there was like a natural I mean that's the that's how I know to do it. Okay. I mean there's probably a more elaborate way, but I mean I mean I'd have to te- I've taught myself all this stuff, so I, I just, think censoring it would take away from Yeah. The um, but basically she went on she went on this this rant. Not a rant. She went she was delivering a message. No, it was a rant. Um and and that was it. Say you need to expand your emotional vocabulary. It's so your life can be easier. Don't you want to be able to communicate with your bitch? I think, I think yes, right? Long gone are the days where you can just shut down. Bitches is not tolerating that. Like, it used to be where men provided financially or with Schmeet and bitches can make their own self come and we can pay for our own shit. So I'm gonna need y'all to catch up on the emotional part. If a bitch is telling you, I need you to communicate more, open your fucking mouth. But you know what I realized? And let me, let me back up, let me back up. A common misconception about me as a clinician is that 90% of my clientele have been men black men specifically. And what we specifically work on is expanding their emotional vocabulary because a lot of y'all motherfuckers don't even have the words to express how you're feeling. So when you expand your vocabulary and knowledge of what you are experiencing because y'all are human beings who experience feelings and emotions and don't have to choke that shit down no more. Y'all ain't had to choke that shit down since 2016. Anyway, if y'all are not in therapy, expanding your emotional vocabulary, your life just off top is going to be more difficult. When you expand your emotional vocabulary, you expand your awareness of yourself. When you expand your emotional vocabulary, you understand how you can navigate in this bitch. This fucking weird ass world that is so hard on y'all. Like, let's acknowledge that the world is very difficult for y'all, but y'all are not making it any easier, bro, bro. You're not. When bitches are telling y'all to go to therapy, it's not for us. It's for y'all sad motherfuckers. Go to therapy. Talk about that shit that's on your chest. You don't have to choke that shit down no more. Y'all are doing a disservice to yourself. And so let me, let me, let me sum this shit up. Y'all told bitches to elevate our standards. And at the cost of us elevating y'all standards, y'all got axed because y'all didn't elevate either bitches are not tolerating emotional abuse emotional neglect step it up go talk to somebody go expand your emotional vocabulary so your life can be better bitch all right go in peace (laughs) well um as you could expect one might expect uh, a lot of black men did not take kindly of course to you to her let me uh, because that's not fair um, take only to the delivery, the message, or the tone. 
So apparently, according to her TikTok, this is the only evidence we have. Her her TikToks herself. Um, there were men, black men, calling into her job to try to get her fired. According to her, now there was an art- or there were several articles written about the reaction to this viral video, and then there was actually uh, one article in particular that actually said her name, full name, and where she worked. And according to her, in a follow-up video, that article, along with calls from alleged black men, actually got her fired yeah. from her job. Shame. The board met with, um, <clears throat> I guess, management or whatever, and they made a decision. Um, what hasn't come to light and what a lot of people are trying to position as her trying to apologize after she was fired was in between the video of her announcing that she was fired and the video that she initially released, she actually had, um, two separate videos where she apologized for her tone, her delivery, but said that she, as a black woman who's been hurt in relationships, um, wants to see black men evolve mm-hmm. and, and experience some emotional, uh, growth. So some of uh, the lines got blurred in terms of her personal feelings and opinions and history coming and into a professional uh, message. And she gave context and, and, and went into way more the, the kinds of depth that you would have expected someone to go into as a part of the original message. She did. Sorry. She did as she, uh, as she, shirt. I can see. Um, she did in the follow up. When as most people would have expected it, like in the initial. So side she, note, if I ever opened an establishment, I'd probably name it Notorious. Carry on. What's up? I can get down with that. Can I? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so she got fired, and um, that was it. Now she's unemployed. For now. For now, she's probably so. Unemployed. Your reaction, because you watched it right before we came, before we started recording. Um, I am, I don't want to say I didn't appreciate her delivery. I'm just not one for, so there, I'm twofolded. Like there's a part of me that really appreciates people who cuss, but who have the art of cussing, like who, who can, some people just cuss for the sake of it. And it's, it's just from it it's worthless to me. It, It doesn't add value to a conversation. It's, you just sound Vulgar. illiterate vulgar. vulgar and illiterate to me mm-hmm. um and you try for me it's an insecure it comes off as an insecurity like i'm i'm just inserting these cuss words um but then there are some people who like they legitimately have mastered the art of extensive cuss communication curse communication to make it more formal i didn't think she del- i didn't think i felt like her delivery would have come off for me personally in a more powerful way had she omitted the cut like i'm not a big fan of like bitches and not just bitches but dusty bitches dusty bitches um (laughs) i mean in general i'm not a fan of dusty bitches um (laughs) who is who is in theory and or in yes or in this example here um so i just felt like it was it could have hit harder without that because for me, I didn't take I didn't take her as a professional just by her delivery. But I say that recognizing that just because someone is a therapist doesn't mean they can't take that hot that hat off. But it, I, I think I was just kind of confused in terms of like I was analyzing it like, is that how you're talking to your patients? Which is fine. Like if you're having like re, like the real therapy sessions where you're just like ninja you need to get your ish together. That's cool. Um, But once I dissected what she was saying, like, and actually listened to the message, I did find value in it. I did recognize her professionalism in terms of like, this is something she studied. This is the clientele base that she works with. This is something that she's recognized and she's putting it out there. I just think context or the content And the delivery, there was a slight disconnect. I also think that there's, it's okay for men to cuss. It's okay for them to, this is just me saying and generalizing. Um, But when women cuss, I think a lot of men 
a lot of people have an expectation on how a woman is supposed to communicate, how a woman is supposed to be delicate, sweet, all, you know, all of the soft words that describe a woman that make you feel, you know, comforted and, and whole. Um, so I think a lot of men who may have watched it were put off by a woman with a potty mouth, which I, which I've seen. I mean, and I'm biased to it too. I'm not a big fan of, of women who don't cuss well. Like I, I don't have a problem if you cuss. I will drop I will drop a cuss word here and there. I don't do it regularly because I feel like if it's part of my regular vocabulary, I'll slip and say something in front of my kids. And I don't want that. I, I don't want kids who accident. I don't want to get a phone call. Sala said this in school, whatever. Uh, and it's just cuss words don't roll off the tongue as properly for me. Even when I tried it in high school, like I tried this whole season, and I was the preacher's kid, so people were like, "Just stop." So I just stopped. Like occasionally, you know, stub my toe, drop an F bomb ish, all that other stuff. But it's just not me. So I think people may have been specifically men may have been put off by the fact that she was cussing like that. Um, But overall, I think her message was spot on. I don't disagree with anything that she said. I think the hard thing is when you generalize people get defensive because by default they assume you're putting them in that category. And I think part of it becomes defense of, I don't fit into the whole statement, but it also becomes defense because maybe you recognize that you might fit into part of the statement. So I, I, I know I'm I'm a blanket state statement person. I give me a comforter and I will put it on the entire statement. I will, everybody does this, um, but I also know to recognize that there are exceptions to the rule. And I think people forget that there are exceptions to the rule. And if you are an exception to the rule, you need to not be offended. Uh, like it's with race relations and all of this. People get so up in arms about things when you generalize them, and it's like if that's not you. Yes, no one wants to be put into a category that doesn't fit with them. But if you know it's not you and you know you're true to yourself, then you don't need to go out of your way. And like your character should be your defense, your guiding light. So I think people were just men specifically because this that whole thing was about men. I think they they got defensive. But I think the defensive comes from the fact that she was speaking truth and maybe they didn't want, they weren't ready to hear that truth. People aren't ready to hear that truth cuz that is a harsh what she was saying was tough. It was it, like even I was like, "Whew. Man, tough to be a black dude right now." Um but I think she should ha- that and that could be the thing about these TikTok celebrities, TikTok professionals you have a short window of time to catch people's attention you've said it before um like with the bits that you post um in our reels you have a short window to keep people's attention to get them to keep clicking and i think she did a good job of getting people's attention because for me to dedicate two minutes and 20 seconds um to just keep watching that was a lot i could have been doing something else like do you know how much i could have scrolled through like I could have done so much else, but I do think that it may have come off as man bashing, but even so, I think there are points to what she made that people need to stop and think like the why, why is this something she recognizes? Why is this that what she said, 90% of her clientele are black men. Why is this a consistent thing? And let's get to the root of why this is This is now a communal problem. This is not just like, oh, a few black male clients I have deal with this. This is something that a majority of the black male clients she has is dealing with. So what do we do to make sure this doesn't continue as a generational spread? What do we do to fix the people that are dealing with it now? So I, it's easy to be offended. It's easy to to jump on like she don't know what she's talking about she needs to lose her license ultimately lose her job but i also think she was trying to communicate in a way people were understand she seemed fed up 
she see, she genuinely seemed fed up and I get it. I, I, I get that. I think women are fed up, not just black women. I think women in general, cause that psychology today article about how heterosexual men are struggling with relationships. It's a, it's a, if you want to talk about coronavirus being a pandemic relationships is a pandemic the issues the the structure of relationships and i feel for dudes because their grandfathers and fathers didn't have to put much effort into relationships in my opinion and now because women bring more to the table like to her example like women the things that men are supposed to do for women women can now do for themselves so now men are at a disadvantage where they need to show up in a different way. And that new way is probably emotionally. So if you're not going to show up emotionally, I don't need to, I don't need to deal with you. So that's just where my thoughts on it. I feel like you got a lot to say and you've crooked your mouth in a very uncomfortable way for me. So it looks <laughs> like, you, like half your face is drooping. Thanks. Fix that. Cool. Wow. So you're attacking my your facial structure. My facial structure. So. I'm attacking the face you chose to make in that moment. I'm just I'm listening to you. I was letting you. I'm trying to be a lot better about not interrupting you when you're when you're going. So I was letting you go. Thank you. Appreciate that. No problem. Let's be better about saying sure. Hmm. Nothing. What do you mean? Nothing. I would love to know your two cents. I say sure a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh. Uh-huh. That's a problem? Mm-hmm. Why? Because it's not a definitive answer. So when I hear sure, it 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 doesn't let me believe you're committed to something or you actually want to do something. Hmm. That sounds like more of something that you need to yeah, figure out, right? Yeah, that's just how I was raised. Okay. I was raised to not say I had an interaction as a kid where I said sure and... They were like, yes or no. And I just said, sure. And I was, the response I got made sure a very uncomfortable word for me. So if it's something serious, I want a definitive yes or no, not a sure. But. Okay. We can but just, I feel like that's something that you need to work out, not, not no, me. No. Yeah. I think you have made it very clear that you learned from your brother to not give definitive answers so uh yeah that's already established within me mm-hmm. as you told me this so mm-hmm. by you saying sure it's not a definitive answer but this is not no. what we're here to unpack right now. no but i'm but no i want to address it because uh sure does not fall into that my thought process of not committing okay so like if someone says do you want to do this? I'd be like, yeah, I should be able to do that. I should be able to do it. Or yeah, we can we can see next week. Sure is an answer I give when I it doesn't matter to me. Like if it's something you want to do, sure, let's do it. If it's something you don't really want to do, you're like, hey, I don't really want to do this. Sure. It's 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 it's, it's when I have absolutely nothing. It's when I don't have a firm uh, opinion one way or the other is when I give sure. It's not a matter of me not willing to commit. It's just if you don't want to do it, I don't want to do it. Okay. If you want to do it, I'll do it. Okay. So I I don't know what this interaction you had uh, when you're young because the first time I'm hearing of it. Um, but I would love to know off camera what it was. Because for sure, for me, it's just, it's just like a quick fire response. You know, people have like the, uh, the little suggestions that pop up when you start typing, like, sure. It's just my, it's my auto quick response. Although I did, I did, uh, use it. I uh, having a little bit of a toot when I was in a meeting the other day, cause somebody was saying something, me and them weren't really vibing. And, um, they were like, they'll, they'll look for something like at the end of the day. I was like, yeah, sure. So in that instance, yeah, I was being I was being disrespectful. <clears throat> um, what are we talking about? Oh, the the video. Yeah, so I have um, some thoughts, a couple of different thoughts. One, this is there's been a very interesting uh, connection here. Uh, we saw the video 
uh, that we added into our episode last week about the experiment where the yeah you black, actually added it yeah I did uh, I, I hadn't planned to but I was like, you know let me just go ahead and put it in because <clears throat> either it's easier to add it in than to remember to link it <laughs> afterward so I was like, let me just make a part of the episode so uh, we saw that right where black and white teachers um, were told to watch this video to and see how many disruptions or, or kids mm-hmm. acting out that they could find and what it really was was eye tracking software and all the teachers watched the little black boy and then a couple episodes before that we talked about uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes in his Father's Day sermon mm-hmm. saying that um, what went viral was his clip telling women you know Hey, we're losing our families because you want to do this, you want to do that, you want to, that, you basically want to be an independent woman. But the larger message was, men, these, this is what, this is the 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 the, the effect of you not uh, taking responsibility of you not being all that you can be, not being there for your family, not pouring into your family. Like it causes women to say, "Hey, I don't need you. I can do this all myself." And then the greater result is that we lose our families. Um, so this all kind of like, let's say it comes together, but I can, like, it all kind of plays a, like a part in some form or fashion. So speaking to like the video last week, when you look at how young black boys are treated in this country, how they're already seen as having a higher potential to be disruptive, right? They may come from, um, Maybe they don't have a father at home, right? Or maybe, you know, whatever. But society is already kind of treating them as if they're a disruption. So you can kind of see where a lot of that lacking emotional intelligence comes from, because if you're already being perceived as trouble um, and you may or may not have the instruction to kind of set you straight, you can kind of develop and carry that baggage through life, right? Um, So with that in mind, if you're speaking to a black man who's already been spoken to his entire life, the way you're delivering a message that's supposed to get him to go to a place where he can learn how to resolve all that, it can be triggering Mm -hmm. and it can be counterproductive. So you are a therapist, but you're speaking to me the way I've been spoken to my whole life, which as a result has me the way that you're saying I need to fix. And you want me to trust this institution that you're apparently a part of? Like, I can see how someone would be like, nah, like, why would I go to therapy if this is a representative of therapists? Um, So I I get that. Um, And I don't think she should have been fired because at the same time, I used to play sports. I played rec sports. I played school sports in middle school high school, played collegiate sports for a little bit. I've been spoken to <laughs> in manners that would, that would probably be illegal <laughs> in other, in other world, like in other countries and other cities. Like I, I've, and that's just kind of the nature of sports, especially football. Like you get spoken to pretty rough and you have to f- sort through like the yelling the uh, the idioms, <laughs> the dirty idioms, the sayings, and and find the instruction, kind of like you said. So I kind of see it from that perspective too. Like some of the best messages, some of the messages that you really need to hear, don't always come packaged pretty. Sometimes you got to break them down. Um, you got to look for the message, not necessarily who the messenger is and how the messenger is delivering it. Um, so me personally, I can, I looked at it and it's unfortunate because I saw it after I read up on like all the fuss about it. So I wish I had seen it just organically. Like it just scrolled across my, my timeline. But like you said, I I don't think it applies to me because I mean, I've gone to therapy. I'm a huge proponent of mental health, of talking things out. How, the, how important communication is. I need to go back to therapy. I haven't been in a couple of years and it, the, what's stopping me isn't my trust in it or its effectiveness. It's more of a monetary thing. Um, it, it, or at least it's been until you told me about 
about our benefits, which is, I think is great. Um, so now it's just a matter of like time fitting it in. No, I'm a huge proponent of, of mental health and people doing things that are best, what's best for their mental health. Um, I'm on record of, of saying that multiple times. So, um, I kind of lost my train of thought. So, uh, yes, it didn't, it, I, I felt like it didn't, didn't apply to me. So I didn't get offended and I, I got the, the meat of what she was saying. I think what's, what's troublesome is you have to be, you have to move delicately in public spaces like social media when you're not in control of the fate of your employment. So like I messaged Steph and asked her, had she seen it and what she thought about it? Um, who and Stephanie owns her own, she's licensed, but she owns her own practice. Cousin Steph. Cousin Steph. Okay. Yeah. Her own, her own business. So she can, who, you know, she was very, um, candid like last, last season when she spoke and she can do that because she's, mm -hmm. she's got her own business. Like she's in charge and you know, she, she knows the line in which, you know, she can go up to and not cross. Um, and it's probably, she probably has more leeway than someone who's not, they're not a business owner. So, or owns her own practice. So, you know, I just feel like she should have been a little bit more aware, uh, because, you know, if you're, if you're bad for business, then you bad for business. And I think that's unfortunate, but I, I, I don't like the fact that she lost her job. I felt like people have to be able to hear things that they disagree with, um, and not their first instinct be, we got to get this person out of here, or we have to go get this person fired. Like people's jobs, livelihood, like, yeah, I'm not going to be set. I mean, people lose jobs every day, right? <laughs> it was like, I'm not saying there aren't times where people should lose or shouldn't lose their jobs because there are some people who probably shouldn't be in, in certain, certain positions. But I just think that it's problematic that anytime somebody with a platform says something that a large number of people disagree with, there's always this movement to find that person's employer. Like, Hey, this person has to go. This person has to, this person is saying this. I uh, you see a lot of companies, if they're small, they kind of buckle under the pressure because per social media can be perceived to be, a have a bigger effect than maybe what it actually does. Mm -hmm. I think in certain, certain instances. So I, I, I kind of see every side, you know, each side of it. Um, I, like I said, I don't like the fact that she lost her job. Uh, but at the same time, I can understand how, even though I didn't have that reaction, how a black man could see that and either be triggered or be totally turned off because, you know, sometimes delivery does matter. Um, and if I'm someone who's suffering from these, these, uh, symptoms that you call out in your video, but you're speaking to me in a way that I've been spoken to my whole life that has kind of caused me to be this way. Like there's no way that you could expect me to trust you or this, this thing that you're trying to get me to go to. So that's my piece. It's just kind of, kind of messy all around. I think, and of course there's conversations going on. Gender wars, I guess is what they call oh, of it. Of course there'll always be gender wars. Gender wars. I call it on, on Twitter over this. Um, That's uh, just, just unfortunate. Hopefully, she finds some. I think she. I think sustainability. she'll be fine, and I think oh, it, I so. this might actually spark her starting her own her own business. Um, hopefully, if that's her desire, and she'll probably be rallied around by black women because well, black women do that. Um, we're good for that. But it was a black woman who wrote the article, and didn't. The rumor is is that she didn't give even call, which because she put her full government out, and where she worked, that she didn't even call the therapist to like give her a chance to respond to what she was going to put out, like to have like quotes or anything. Well, she probably worked for the New York times and wrote that article about uh, the oh, married couple from last no. week. <laughs> it was, um, she's so not she a, doesn't count. She I doesn't, mean, she doesn't work for them. the community. There are, an, are anomalies that don't, she, that don't. I'm very certain that the person who wrote the art, the article that got the most attention does not work for the times, nor is she affiliated. She might be in any capacity. She probably works under like a ghost pseudo name, whatever. Is it, that that, um, that article really bothers you? It does. And I don't, I I don't understand why. I'm just I don't appreciate bad depictions. When you're black, 
and you're raised black by black people. You are taught to how important your perception is. Always, you know, having to bring your Sunday best, all of this stuff. And when it comes to black relationships, black relationships don't have the best depiction in the public eye. And then you come from, you know, just historically, when you think about or when you do the research and you learn about why the structure just generationally of the black family is so complex because you had men who were being used for breeding. You had families that were sold and split up where, you know, a mother could have a child and then her child is sold to a plantation states away. So there's so much complexity in terms of how the black family regardless of what part of the diaspora um, is is perceived. So I, I'm very bothered that of, and I don't know how many articles on marriage or the coming to a wedding, the New York Times releases, but especially relating to minorities and blacks, but I just feel like if you are going to put out a story about black love. There are so many wonderful, well-worded, well-put-together black love stories that have that enchantment, that have that, you know, what we always see with the white Disney princesses um, or on, you know, TV shows. TLC used to have a show, um, I think a wedding story um, that I used to watch with my mom growing up. So the fact that it's it almost feels like they went out of their way to find a story that was so stereotypical to stereotypes that are put on black people, for me, it's offensive. Popeye's chicken, the stereotype that black people love fried chicken. Like, yeah. just, it, like, they're just... I mean... No. But we do. I do. I don't. You don't love fried chicken? No. I'll eat fried chicken. I appreciate fried chicken, but I can go without fried chicken. And it's maybe in the words of Joe Biden, I'm not black. I ain't black. It's problematic. It is. But that's why you eat fried chicken like once a quarter from me. <laughs> once a quarter. I'd, I'd love for that. It's not even once a quarter. I made it for Father's Day, didn't I? You did. It was great. It was yeah. delicious. We're still in that quarter. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, so, but no, we, no, we no, digress. No, no, no. I, I want to I stay with this. Um one thing, and I don't know that you're doing it, and so I don't want you to take this as me in saying that you do. But I'm if you, already offended. but if you, if you are, then yes, I'm absolutely speaking to this. I, I don't think that we should constantly compare ourselves and our successes and what our images of successful or wonderful should be always to white people. And I think that that's a problem that a lot of people have. Like, just maybe subconsciously, it's like. Oh, I got to, you know, they're like this. So we got to be like this or we can't do this. Otherwise they're going to, they're going to look at us like this. Like sometimes we got to just exist in our own space and be our own people and have our own aspirations, totally independent of what a white structure has been or what a white person is or what a white, what, how white people are, are projected and perceived. Like I, there's like, I, I, I don't like there are times where I just don't, I don't care like what, you know, how well, uh, a reality wedding show perceives a white couple as if they hold it up as some sort of standard. Like, I don't, I don't care. I've gone my whole life looking at beauty magazines and seeing white skinny women as the definition of beauty. And I've never cared. That's what I see, but I don't care about it. It's never affected my standard. I don't think that the epitome of beauty is a blonde, blue eyed, thin white woman. There are white women who fit that description who are attractive. Yes, but that's not my definition of beauty. So I don't think that every black woman who aspires to be beautiful should shrink her hips and get blue contacts and dye her hair blonde. I don't. Because a beautiful black woman can exist totally irrespective of what is perceived to be a white, you know, a beautiful white woman. So I kind of heard some of that in what you were saying. And like I said, if, if that's not where you're coming from, if that's not your, your base, then I'm not speaking to you, but I have seen other people do it. And I just think that that's something we, we <laughs> as a people should just get away from because it's not necessary. It just isn't. Um, but also 
speaking of black wonderful marriages and stories of people who come together we got a high divorce rate in this country like somebody could have all the bells and whistles and and, and the beautiful wedding and on um, in a castle and just joyful right they don't play the wobble it's it's they're <laughs> they're, they're is, not they're not a, ghetto they're they're what is they're, a wedding without the wobble <laughs> I'm just saying, like you could have all that, and then what, what does it matter if they get divorced in six months, right? Does so you had this big, beautiful, what was perceived to be perfect wedding, but you only last a year or two years. Maybe you got three, but you got divorced. Now you're in debt, more than likely. Most people go into debt when they have those big fancy weddings. So. That's got to be part of the picture, too, though, right? Like, if we're going to talk about black couples and black love and black and, and successful things, that has to be a part of the equation as well. Mm-hmm. So just because somebody got together in a very <laughs> extremely unorthodox situation and it isn't uh, how most people would describe the the perfect or most beautiful um, um engagement or a proposal and then wedding that's still their story and i don't think we have the right to say whether or not it's valuable or not and whether or not it should be highlighted because so many of the stories that do get told are just like the ones that you said should have been highlighted those are the ones we see all the time so why not I'm not sure this one. We're gonna have fun with it. Absolutely. <laughs> Popeyes would not be my would not and none of my multiverse variants would propose to you at a Popeyes. Just would very different. But again, it worked for them, clearly. And they might they might outlast any of the other entries that were that were uh, that were considered? I mean, frankly, I don't care about their like the longevity of their relationship. But I care about the depiction. But that's part. But that does. But see, what I'm saying is, but part of the depiction has to be the whole story. Because what if you have a beautifully depicted wedding, but you got a toxic couple and they're not together in six months, right? And they have a kid, and now the kids has to deal with the, a split home, or any other number of, of variables. But you could have a, a wedding or a, a, a married couple that's depicted differently or maybe more in line with perceived stereotypes, but they're great. Or what if you have a story that depicts a couple that the gentleman comes off as having no true interest in the woman and then in six months to a year, they end up divorced? Yeah, that could happen. Absolutely. I'm not saying that 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 there's no possibility I, like, of that. All I'm saying is that it felt targeted. Like they intentionally went out of their way to find the instance, the story that would make someone look bad. I mean, that's news. <laughs> but I, I don't. I don't have an I don't know enough about that particular section of the paper. Uh, Because then, like I said, I know it's something that they do pretty regularly uh, to see any of the other couples. Um, This is the only one that I've been exposed to. So maybe you're right. Maybe it does. Maybe it is uh, an exception relative to all the other ones that they post. Um, But I've just seen so many people uh, just be so down on it. And, you know. Might be obviously it was acceptable to both parties because they went through it. Anyway, how did we digress over here? Um, back to okay. Oh, I guess I guess we're done with them. Yeah, because I I'm tired of talking. Like it bothers me, but it keeps coming up. But I'm you tired. brought it up. I'm tired of talking about. You brought it up. I I'm tired of clear. talking about you're that. On the tape. You I do think that um, that black men do need therapeutic help but i think it stems deeper it stems to the community as a whole um you know it probably took until our generation 
and maybe more so the women of our generation to and a small percentage of men to accept that going to therapy doesn't mean you're crazy that going to therapy is preventative health it's it's you know recognizing that you do that there are things that naturally you bottle up inside of you that you need to release and speaking to a professional is how you do that so that's you know fathers raising sons those fathers who are raised by fathers grandfathers great grandfathers who have bottled up traumas and emotions and this depiction of how men are supposed to be um, especially black men because I myself personally I feel that the way a black man is supposed to be perceived differs from how men of other races are supposed to be perceived I feel like the standard is is completely different the expectation is different um, and there's more weight on the shoulders of black men who become black husbands, who become black fathers. Um, So I think that's a portion of what she's saying that like you need to get out of this hole of thinking that to her point, it's okay to just shut down, which a lot of men do, you know, whenever it comes to something that requires emotion, that requires, you know, that test a part of them that they can't control, it turns into a shutdown and that affects relationships. And I think naturally a lot of humans shut down. Um, It's how you respond from that, but that is a part of it. Why are you shutting down? What about this makes you uncomfortable? What situations have you been in in your past that makes you feel this is the best response? Maybe you had a vulnerable moment as a child and you went to your father, your uncle, your brother, and they, you know, said, be a man or that's not how a man acts. So because of that, you you've taught yourself to shut down. That's something you need to speak to a professional about. Get over that or get through or work through that, excuse me, and then be able to communicate into a relationship. She also touched on, um, just overall what men, she said black men specifically, but I think this is, this is a blanket statement for men in general. But I think for us as black people, we see the, the blackness from it. Um, but what more are you bringing to the table? And I think this is a topic that keeps coming up. And instead of black men recognizing why do people keep asking what more we're bringing to the table, that should make you realize that you're not bringing enough to the table. Um, That's the only thing I just made. You sound. squeaked. I did. Um, which I, I think is fact. Like I said, I sympathize for men of this generation because you have a different breed of women. You know, men of a generation ago, two generations, three generations had women who, for the most part, were dependent on men. You were born, you had to, you know, get married, bear children, take care of a household. And it was the man's job to go to work, come home eat repeat so i think we're in a time where you know if it wasn't for you you think about like the feminist movement um which i have my opinions on that but i'm just pulling um examples from it you know it was the work of ruth bader ginsburg that got women to be able to get a credit card without the permission of husbands or fathers you know so you have women who are in a place where to an extent, they don't need men. Her example, like women can, there are toys. Women can make themselves sexually taken care of. You know, we work hard. We have enough money to go on our girls' trips, to buy ourselves mimosas at brunch. Like we, and it's it's it might not be comfortable to say, but at least from the the value that black women have for themselves, black women don't need men. We are in a time where women don't necessarily need men. Women can provide for themselves. They can put a roof over their heads. They can get food on their own table. They can have a good time. They can travel. So if those were the things that men of past generations, that was where their value was, that was what they brought to a relationship, and that's not what's needed anymore, then yes, to her point, men need to do more. You do need to be more emotionally available. You do need to be more aware. You do need to be more, quote unquote, domestic. 
because it's not your money. I'm not marrying you for your money. I'm not marrying you for your sex game. I'm not marrying you for, you know, the old traditional contributions. I'm marrying you for genuine companionship for a partner in life. So if you're not bringing those things, if you're not providing those things to her, she doesn't need you. And I think it's hard for men to accept that there are a generation of women who do not need them when they've been conditioned to think that this is these are this is the rule book that I these are the rules I need to follow to get a woman and I'll be I'll I'll have that security so I agree with her and I think the offense comes because people don't always want to hear the truth and when they hear the truth, they want it to be sugar-coated. They want it to be delivered comfortably. And she didn't deliver her truth or the truth of this majority comfortably. So that's why people got offended. That's why men got offended. And that's why they went on a witch hunt to make sure she got fired. So I, I, I don't disagree. I, I think in terms of what I hear, what I see, I do think she's spot on. You know what's funny? Is that um, we talk about emotional intelligence for men. Um, and that was what she led with. It was one of the main things she called out. Um, and she, as a black woman, didn't have the emotional intelligence not to let her personal opinions float over to her professional uh, delivery of her of her I video. That was necessarily emotional intelligence, more so as it was. Oh no, she professional. Had, no, I think diction. No, because she again, there's another video that hasn't surfaced uh, where she apologized for letting some of her personal stuff come seep in. Um, that's that kind of fits the bill of emotions. Well, I think her personal stuff probably seeped in because the burden of the black woman, in my opinion, is that she cares for the black man. Absolutely. So I think part of why her her personal feelings came um, bled through was because she was like, I'm seeing the suffering of the men in my community, men that I care about, men that I could potentially love, but they are blocking themselves from receiving. And maybe the, the 10% clientele of black women who are struggling as well in terms of finding men who are at their level, who are rising up to the challenge of them. She's like, y'all, like the disconnect, this is the disconnect. And it's frustrating because, you know, as a professional, I'm sure she can't just be like, dude, you are emotionally inte not intelligent, lacking of intelligent intellect. And this is why you can't get to where you are. Because therapists, for the most part, have to be pretty delicate with people. Very few times will you have a therapist who will straight up be like, this is why you are not where you need to be. Um, so I think that is why her emotions slipped through because she was just like I see it I recognize it I'm hearing it on a regular basis this and and I want better for the men that I care about and so that's how I interpret it um so I wouldn't say that she didn't have emotional intelligence I would just say that because of her emotional intelligence she's able to recognize these things mm -hmm. obviously with study as well. And, and just her care, her concern for her community makes her so passionate about putting this message out there so that people can be better and get to a place that is healthy for themselves. So I'm hearing is that it's okay um, for her to exhibit emotional unintelligence or have moments where she's not in control of her emotions because she wants better for I wouldn't say she men. wasn't in control of her emotions. I think when you say I accident I let my personal opinions and emotions come into my professional message because of things that have happened to me in my past, I take that as not being in control of your emotions. Well first of all I think that there's a default a disclaimer that a therapist cannot be no all i cannot treat via social media no you absolutely can but you have to be you have to do it carefully because like if you say 90 percent of my clientele is black men 
And then whether you speak, you speak in generalities, yes, but you touch on topics that those 99, those clients have brought to you in confidence. Mm -hmm. I mean, I may not want, whether I, whether Joe Schmo watching this on their TikTok knows that that's something I said to you. I know it. So me personally, I don't want my therapist talking about things that we discuss, whether they put my name to it or not on social media. Like I, I wouldn't, I personally would not want a social media therapist mm -hmm. person. That's just me. But I think whether someone cares or they don't, I think you still as a therapist have to be careful with how you deliver and the things you talk about and the way in which you say those things on social media. I absolutely think you do just because again, you don't know who you're, who you're, who's seeing you and who is going to take your one, two minute, 20 second video. And you could either reach somebody or you could lose somebody. Mm -hmm. And so you just gotta be, I think you just need to be careful just with your persona and how you deliver things. Because if I bring, if you're in, if you sign up and you come into my office, I can control like your perception, like how you perceive me because we're, you were in a very controlled space where it's one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but if I just see you on social media and I see a, a 20 second clip or a two minute clip, you know, I don't get the benefit of another 58 minutes with you in a session. I just got two minutes. That's it. And I could be like, that's why I don't go to therapy because she made me feel this way or that therapist made me feel this way. So, um, but I mean, that can I, also play into her argument that if you are emotionally intelligent, you would see that clip and you would also be able to recognize where the improvement in self needs to be made. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not disputing the fact that men and women need to be better with their emotional intelligence. What I'm saying is, is that if you, if we're to use the example of a black man who's been, like I said, spoken to a certain way their entire life. And part of the reason why they inhibit that emotional unintelligence or they have those, those feelings or um, behaviors that they do. If I, if you're trying to reach me, but you're speaking to me the same way that's caused me to pull back my entire life, you're not going to get me. And all you're going to do is push me further away. So there, again, you may be able to have moments like that with me in a session because we've got more time together. But if I, if you're, if I'm just seeing this on my screen for two minutes, you know, I, I might not because I don't, I already don't have that instruction. Mm -hmm. I already don't have that guidance. And like sometimes the tough love, usually that comes after a relationship has been established, mm -hmm. right? Like when the baby, when the kids are born, we don't start out popping them like when they're babies and they knock something over a Sonoma when she dumps her plate on the floor. Like if Silas did that, we'd have a totally different interaction with her than when Sonoma dumps her plate on the floor because we have to establish our relationship. We have to establish do's and don'ts. Whereas we've had more time to do that with Salas. So I can be tougher with her than I can even with Sovereign or Sonoma because they're older. We've had more time. Mm -hmm. If Sonoma dumped a plate and I walked over and <laughs> slapped her on the hand, you probably look at me like I'm like I'm crazy. Or if I, if I took a very stern uh, tone with her, you look at me like I'm crazy. She probably just keep doing it because she don't know, you know, she's Sonoma and she's like, you know, whatever. But I've had time to establish my expectations in my relationship and trust with Solace and Sovereign than I have with Sonoma. It's the same. Mm -hmm. I feel like that any relationship, it's the same way. So if I sit down for my first session with you and you're like, <laughs> you know, and, and it's a, it's, it's a delivery that's similar to how she was in the in the video you know it might be 50 50 whether somebody just gets up and walks out or, or, or not um you i feel like you have to you have to work your way to that tough mm -hmm. love before someone can like okay well i know this is coming from a place of 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 love a place of someone trying to get me to be better mm -hmm. 
now I'm better suited. Now my, my guard is down and I'm better suited to, to dissect it. But if I just see it on a screen and I haven't had any, you know, I haven't had a therapist or I haven't had the trust to talk to anybody or I haven't made that leap yet or that first step. And I see that it could, you could totally turn somebody off. And when you add on top of that, the topic that's always, like we said, gender wars, that it's a black woman's who could be perceived as attacking black men. It's a perfect storm for someone to just dismiss it and take offense. No, that doesn't excuse people for trying to get fired. But I mean, in this day and age, you just take a risk. <laughs> you just let me talk about anything on social media. I think somebody can try I to come get you. Will partially disagree because I think she. It would be different if she was standing on the stage of you know a TED talk or an emotional intelligence conversation and, and delivered her message like that. I think. As we've we've said many times before, when you're on social media, you need to grab the people's attention. But I also think one thing we may not be taking into account that she is a professional, and maybe she recognizes was, was no. I mean, she still has her, <laughs> I know, her, that was, that was her license. Um, her, maybe she now. recognizes that that is the way of which to communicate to that particular demographic. Hmm. But because if you put culture in it, there are obviously, you know, ways of which black people communicate with each other. Um, that differs from how, you know, a white person may communicate with a black person, how white people communicate with each Like that's just natural culture. I mean, maybe that's part of why we're in this predicament in the first place. Well, but I'm saying like maybe within that 90 percentile of her clients, that's how she's found, and I'm at, or maybe that's just how she's found. She gets the most response from her whoever responds to her TikTok, Instagram, whatever social media platform. So I think we need to take that into account as well. You know, the point of TikTok, the point of trying to get fame through there, is to get people's attention. You know, give the people what they want. Um, but it could also be like we might be assuming that she was speaking to black men, but. There could it could have been, you know, a coded message that she was trying to speak to black women in terms of like, this is why black men are struggling. She may not have said it directly, but in an indirect way, just be like, this is why you're not getting the type of men you're looking for, because they are not emotionally intelligent. And I know this because that's the that's the client base that I'm dealing with right now. But I think it's broader than just black men. Because like I said, right, everybody. that so Psychology Today article had, has talked about how m heterosexual men on dating apps, or I think dating in general, are struggling because women have raised the bar, have raised the standard, and men have not. Is that what the article said? I hadn't read it. Yeah, for the most part. Okay. And it, it's pretty much saying that like women are not of women are have different expectations than they used to like it's no more you just have to be good looking like you need to offer more and it's not financial it's not it's not tangible so like, you you just need me to not shut down an argument not shut down an argument <laughs> but i mean also like, like uh, i won't I think, shut down i'll just blow up how about that that'd be, that'd be think, better right i think women are the expectation has changed we recognize that we deserve more. We can get more. And I think a lot of men don't want to give more. So what if, let me ask you something. What if the Popeye's guy is an emotionally intelligent man? He's not. And is able to, to um, articulate and convey his feelings eloquently. He didn't even buy his engagement ring. No, 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 but we're not. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about. You're saying it's not about the money, right? It's not about what you can buy me because I can get my own. It's not about clout. It's about bringing emotional intelligence, the ability to be a partner I can lean on, spar with, or have conversations with mentally on a philosophical level. What if he has those things, right? Which we don't know. Probably not. Mm -hmm. I'll admit. But for the sake of argument, you're not even giving him that opportunity because of what he perceived to not have 
but at the same time is saying things that women say they don't want. So I'm just saying this is coming off a little it 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 seems a little from what you're saying kind of contradictory because I seen everybody, of course, but for the sake of the argument, I saw black women trash this dude, right? And many people would probably say rightfully so because of it seemed like he didn't have money, seemed like he wasn't trying to buy her the fancy things or whatever. Um, things that you're saying women don't need men to have or bring to the table because they can get their own. Which I agree. You, independent of me, independent of these kids, would be a very successful woman. Black woman. You would make your parents, have made your parents proud or should have made you should i would imagine you've made your parents proud mm. someone hooked them up to a uh, lie detector or a, what's the thing the thing where you can Polygraph. yeah like yeah that will come out you've done very well for yourself and i believe you would have done everything that you've done to this point whether or not you're with me so i get it absolutely and it should it should have always been that way that women had an equal and level playing field and they still it's not quite even if you're talking from a, from a, a corporate working sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, you look at the number of women CEOs is going up and, you know, getting degrees and, and done all this, which is amazing and great. And as a father of daughters, like it's, I'd love to see that we're in a world that's finally starting to be progressive in, in respect to, to how women are able to uh, succeed in this world. Um, but you're saying you don't need any of that from a guy. So what if this dude has the emotional intelligence, right? But you're not giving him, but you're not, <laughs> I know he probably doesn't, but to say he does, you're not giving, but you, we don't know because you're not even giving him a chance. So is it, is it not, I don't care about the, 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 the monetary and, um, what's the word? Um, material stuff. And I just care about the emotional and the heart and, and all that stuff or is it probably a little what it should be is a little bit of both like it's real easy to say when the topic is mental or emotional intelligence that i don't need a man to have all this i just need a man to have this because i can get this and it's another thing to live it right your the, your true reaction came out when we talked about that story because this dude had for what we, what we could probably has had none of it, but he definitely didn't have the material stuff. But you didn't even like his emotional intelligence and all that other stuff that we're talking about now. It didn't even come up. Mm -hmm. So he didn't even have a chance. No. So clearly, it that fa that stuff that you're saying doesn't matter. It factors in a little bit. So I just want I just want us to be a little bit more genuine and less disingenuous and not act like if if, if a brother is, is broke. And, you know, from not well off that a woman's going to be interested in him because after a conversation, they realize he had emotional intelligence that might happen, mm -hmm. but more than likely it's not. So I was just curious. I wanted to see what you would say, because I know one, I know you said you didn't want to talk about it anymore, but no, I didn't I wanted to bring it up. tired of this relationship, but I did say it's my favorite relationship. I, I love, I love the Popeye's relationship ago, that. We're not in their relationship. Absolutely we don't not. know the details of it. Mm -hmm. You're right. He might. I mean, I believe he works in tech. I think that's what I had read. So he's uh, saving he works, his money. He works in tech. <laughs> so he's not. I'm and I'm not it's concerned not. about if he's broke or anything. Um, I think, from my perspective, and how I view qualified. Go ahead. A, a qualified man. No, I'm um, saying you're qualifying, but go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I can only speak from my perspective. <laughs> I was just messing with you. But um, for me, he just what I read, he didn't do it for me. Sure. But I mean, there are moments where you didn't do it for me. Yeah. I have a very, I have a very complex expectation from a man. There are, I'm very, I will, I will be the first to acknowledge that I can be very sexist in terms of what a man should do. Um, I never wear the hat that I'm a feminist, but I'm a firm believer that women are capable of doing great and phenomenal things. But when it comes to 
man work. I'm I have my my belief in what it called me sexist. Man I, work. I, I, there are things that I believe. I'm gonna in start. Man. I'm gonna start saying that. I'm like, nah, baby, don't worry about it. This man work. Yeah, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I say it. I I don't touch the trash. I feel like that's man work. I've never mowed a lawn. You know what? I don't. You're you're right. Yeah. Absolutely. So laundry, it's woman work. I'm not doing it. No, you gonna do laundry. Nah, I'm not doing it. So I don't want you coming. Your laundry. Yeah, because um, you have three daughters. There's always something pink. Stuff anyway. be turning pink. Stuff be shrinking. I have pink clothes now. Good. So maybe now anyway, you feel my pain. I have a white tank top that's now like an off. I mean, tank top. I don't mind. Nobody's gonna see it anyway. No, women tank tops we wear to be seen. Um, Mm -hmm. like in 32 years, I've never mowed a lawn. The closest I've come to touching a lawnmower is when you used to park in the garage, and I had to one time hop over it. I don't. That's man work to me. I I will say it. I am when it comes to men, I am sexist. Mm -hmm. But I feel that way about laundry. But there are women who have no issue mowing a lawn. Cool. There are women who have no issue dealing with, and I really only stopped doing the trash because I was pregnant um, and I couldn't lift the bag because I had pelvic floor issues. I couldn't lift the bag into the trash can um, and then it just kind of stuck. But if you need me to take the trash out, like, fine, I'll take the trash out so you can stop whining. But I'm very. I just want you to put the trash in the trash. I do. In the recycling, in the recycling bin. I do. Who when, broke down that liquid de- death box? Like everything in the recycling bin, I put that you're, there. You're getting better. So please. You're getting better. I'll give you that. Have several seeds. You're getting better. Anyway, I'm, I think because of just. How do you get on you though? How I was raised and just what I want from a man. I have certain expectations of men. And I think when I think of men, I think of, you know, presence, bravado, I appreciate those things, not in an obnoxious way. I don't like man who, men who are just like, I'm a man, blah, blah, Like, no, but just there's a presence that a man is supposed to have. And then when I think of a black man, there's a, an extra added to that, um, which is why I have an appreciation for black men, which is why I have, I typically have attraction to black men because there's a well formed black men um, bring a certain presence that is recognized, a certain authority, a certain respect. So for me, reading an article about a man who took a, who ghosted a woman two times, who took her to a Popeye's parking lot, who didn't buy her a meal, <clears throat> like I, I'm analyzing this and I'm like, I don't see a provider. I don't see, and the reason why... Granted, yes, she seems like I believe she has a master's degree. She's the head of the end, the the um, I think like the black business something in Boston and not saying that a man has to be a provider. But my long term thought, you know, if I have kids, if I bear your children, there's going to be a recovery time. Do you have the capabilities and the emotional intelligence to care for this offspring while I'm also being like nursed back to health essentially you know if something is to happen can you bear the weight of supporting a family not just financially but just the extra burdens that come with it so i'm reading through this article and i'm not seeing and maybe that's a bias of me i'm not seeing the type of man i would want to see i'm not seeing a man who went and in was intentional about I want to live with this woman. I'm not seeing a man who was intentional about I'm going to select a ring and ask this woman to marry me. So that I think it's those things that make me not. And I'm very particular with how I respect men. I respect men in terms of what how they present themselves. Perception is a very big thing to me. So he came off as very lazy. So I don't know him. I will probably never meet him in my life, but he was not, he's not a man I want to be around because I'm in my head. I see a woman who's going to have to do more in terms of supporting a family and a relationship and women are already carrying so much of a burden. So if you're just existing as opposed to contributing, I can't appreciate that. So again, I say this to say all of this is rooted in my personal bias of men. And we've had to overcome this or we've had to work through it. I won't say overcome it because I feel like you've to an extent kind of figured 
you've to an extent you've sort of gained an understanding of my expectation of manhood and masculinity um to an extent well, but I, I also think you've all you've put me in position where it's like this is how who i am and how i'm gonna be and i also need to accept that do i always accept it no do i always like it no but it's a two-way street that's part of being in a relationship you know you have to adapt your expectations i have to adapt my expectations things that i grew up with and things that you grew up with so you know you were fine with me being a stay-at-home mom you grew up with a stay-at-home mom um for some for most windows of your life whereas i grew up with a mom who worked i i so i find value in in working all the time and even though you know being a stay-at-home mom is bringing being a contributor to the family because you're raising the children it's for me it's not enough i need more i crave more so all of that to say i have my own biases everybody does and i recognize that which is why i just aired them out i am sexist when it comes to men and and what I I feel men shouldn't shouldn't not shouldn't shouldn't do, but what I feel at least foundationally, a good man should have, and then everything else is just kind of bonus points. So yeah, I read that article. I I, I read the feedback. I heard the feedback, and I was like, this dude comes off as a bum to me because he 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 didn't give effort. And I think for at least the fairy tale part of me as a woman you desire a man who passionately wants you and he didn't and and i don't again i don't know her but she's a fellow black woman so there's a default in sisterhood i felt like my sister didn't get that passion that she deserved that that sweeping off of her feet just that you know enchantment that love stories are supposed to have um, supposed to supposed to again I, I, my I, opinion yeah, yeah that's true so that and i think that's why this the story bothers me because this is an accomplished black woman and i feel like the way of which the man whom she married was depicted doesn't meet the hard work she's put into her life yeah I don't want to talk about this another episode. I'm saying it's, it's, it, but it's relevant. I think it's very relevant. So exhausted with this. Um, and I think that there are plenty of people who, plenty of men who were expected to just kind of be everything. Like your example, come in and when a woman has kids and be there and, and cut out and run. And there are probably a lot of, probably a lot of dads who, women had kids with and didn't expect them to hang around and dads who stepped up. First impressions are important, but you never really know how someone's going to react until it's time for them to react. Mm -hmm. And people surprise you both good ways and bad ways. So, uh, that's why I say like, we just, and I think you said it too. Like, we don't know what their relationship's like. We don't know what they're like outside of that thousand couple thousand word you know feature or whatever um but you know it's it's i don't know it's tricky it's like interviewing first impressions like the person you meet for the first like four or five six months it's like interviewing anybody can interview well anybody can be not themselves for a certain amount of time uh but you don't really know until you get a ways into it Mm mm-hmm what someone's actually going to be like. And that's before they start growing and changing. Right. Um, so yeah, uh, I had a few more topics that I wanted to get to. But you just kept probing. Uh, I probed a couple of times, but this therapist topic, I mean, it, it's just, it's meaty and you, you talked a lot. So, um, <laughs> Which is good. I enjoy when you talk. Because as, as apparently last week, we were kind of dry and took a while to get going. Someone said that? Yeah. Um, and I admit, I didn't really didn't want to record, <laughs> record last week. 
I was one, I had thought that you would be okay with dropping the unreleased one. So I was like, no, I'm good. And then you're like, no, we need to record. So I was like, okay, let's, let's, let's do this. But, um, yeah, it's a good place to stop. Um, and I want to make it clear that I think Jessica and I agree more than we disagree on this one. Confident that we do. Well, not the, the New York times article, the, the black therapist. So, um, thanks everybody for watching another episode of rush vibes. This is episode 63. I think 63. It's crazy. I don't know, like, we do, well, like what we're going to do when we drop episode 100. Go on a trip. Go on a trip. And then record episode 101 from the trip. That's pretty cool. So, um, y'all know what to do. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, subscribe, like. And um, we'll be back next week, probably with our special guest. And then uh, I got to get serious about booking, booking these other I guess and get dates locked down because we're going back into busy season when school starts and people start getting into things. So I need to get those dates locked down. Anything else? I'm good. Good. You'll be good. Be emotionally intelligent. Be emotionally intelligent. Go to therapy. Have a therapist or some at least you can speak to, talk to. Um, but any any close friend, relative, they, they can never replace a uh, licensed professional therapist. So. Um, your friend is not your therapist. Don't put your bob. Friend is not your therapist, but don't put it, problems on them. It's good to have people who you who can check in on you. Um, and it's good to have those confidants who you can you can speak to, but uh, you also they can supplement your therapist. I think so. Um, they can. Then by supplement, I mean be someone to speak to. So, well, we'll disagree on it. That's fine. But, um, <clears throat> but I better not ever hear you say check in on your people. Cause I'm going to be like, nah, check in with your therapist. Yeah, Jess. check in on your people and tell them to call their therapist. Well, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I tell people that all the time. Like I'll, if anybody but ever comes to me, don't put the burden on yourself to have to check in on people. Cause that, all, that in itself is a burden. No, well, it's to always be the one well, checking in on people. Well, I think it's a responsibility. And I think, I mean, I I, I've had friends who I had a friend who I had been meaning to check in on and then they, they died tragically. So I think just from a relationship standpoint, not even like putting therapy anywhere in the picture, I think it's good to check in on friends, especially when you have that, that calling, like Canelo had a friend who she, who she said she'd been mean to check in on and then um, they, they passed. So just checking on your friends, number one, um, but you never know just that check-in might help somebody get through and then obviously be a good friend and if you know tell them to go to therapy i think everybody should have a therapist like everybody i think this should just be default i think you should have your yeah. general practice like you get your your your, your, GP, your for women it? you get your OBGYN. OBGYN, your regular doctor your physical therapist your physical therapist okay. your chiropractor your weed man what? and then your therapist huh oh i said that alone and then your therapist what do you know about a weed man? FBI don't come to my house. I don't got nothing. What, what do you know about a weed man? <laughs> everybody have a weed man. I don't have a weed man. I don't. Oh, even know I didn't say everybody do. does. Everybody should. How do you find? Uh, how, no, you don't, don't have know. a weed man. I don't. You don't. I actually, actually, I do. <laughs> I very actually do. The front lawn people don't count. No, I have a weed man. I don't use it outside of uh, states where it's legal. But I have a weed man, absolutely, and you have one too. We have the same weed man. We don't have a <laughs> yes, weed man. Yes, we do. I we don't do. Have a weed man. We do. You just don't realize it. See, I'll be looking out for you, man. So, your doctor, your OB, your physical therapist, your chiropractor, your weed man, and your therapist in no particular order. Just make sure you got them. You don't need a weed man, and you'll be good. <sighs> she does. Weed is good for you. It's from the earth. Everything's from the earth. No, not everything. What's not from the earth? David? McDonald's. McDonald's is from the earth. No, it's not. It's from a lab somewhere. <laughs> it's from a, a test. lab is on the earth. It's from a test tube. Um, man, we out of here. We'll see y'all next Coffee. week. Bye. Yeah. Nothing but some grow pains. Yeah. Hey. 
Hey, I done came way too far, can't stop me now. I done came way too far, can't stop me now. I done came way too far, can't stop me now. I done came way too far, can't stop me now. Stop me now.